Hey everybody, welcome back to the Embry's Memories Channel. I'm your announcer, Gary Beatty. We're going to show you another video that came to us from the Lagarde twins when they came to the 1963 DJ convention in Nashville. You won't believe who they ran into. Here we are in Nashville, Tennessee, the late October, early November of 1963 at the Disc Jockey Convention, the largest country music event of the year. Ted and Tom Lagarde flew in from Sydney, Australia to Nashville to attend this 12th annual DJ convention, Extravaganza, rubbing elbows with some of the biggest stars in country music today, many of whom the twins would later be working with. They're signing in here for the event at the Municipal Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're about to meet some luminaries that have influenced both the Lagards and with whom the Lagards have influenced. One of them, of course, is Mr. Roy Drusky. You'll see him here on the convention floor there. The Lagards did cover a song that they had had out, Three Hearts in a Tangle, and that song did so well for the Lagards over in Australia. There they are signing autographs. There is Roy Drusky. This is one of the greatest conventions in the world for country music as Ted and Tom Lagarde point to the sign that shows the events, what's happening Thursday through Sunday, October 31st through November 3rd, what's happening at the convention, who's performing, what things they have going up, breakfast, lunch and dinners, all the publishers are represented there. And Ted and Tom Lagarde, I'm sure, are going to be approached by some of these publishers and songwriters like Bill Anderson to see if they would be interested in recording some of their country music songs. There's a convention floor where they're having lunch and dinner. It's the 38th birthday celebration for WSM Radio, Grand Ole Opry, that got started in 1925. It's also the 12th annual disc jockey convention. There's the Grand Ole Opry with stars like the Maxine Brown and, and Jim Ed Brown with their sister performing some of the great songs like Limelighter. They had done some shows with the Lagarde twins back in Switzerland. And there they are with Gene Autry. Now Gene Autry is very special to the Lagarde twins as when they were just small boys they would walk 15, I repeat, 15 miles to see Gene Autry in South of the Border, the great movie. Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs there. The Lagards are very impressed with them, their bluegrass music. They broke away from the Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, started their own show, were on the TV hit series Beverly Hillbillies. And later on, their connection grew even further when Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs sold their bus to the Lagarde twins, and the Lagarde twins traveled in it for years and years all across America. There they are with Roy Acuff. Roy Acuff did a tour in Australia. I'm sure he was influenced by the talents of the Lagarde twins, Ted and Tom. Skeeter Davis standing with uh, Earl Scruggs and Lester Flatt, and the great Chet Atkins, the great guitar player, is really fond of these boys. The problem is Chet Atkins doesn't know which one is which. You'll see him looking at their name tags <laughs> to see who they are so he can keep them straight. Uh, Lagarde twins all throughout their career have had fun with their look-alike identities. There they are with Bill Monroe and uh, Bill Monroe of the Bluegrass Boys, the father of bluegrass music. And of course Grant Turner, the great great announcer on the WSM Grand Ole Opry. He will be with them as will Jim Reeves who opened up so many shows especially with Ted and Tom in Billings, Montana. They shared the stage with them and the Wilburn brothers there a lot of times get mixed up with the Lagarde twins as do the Lagarde twins get mixed up with the Wilburn brothers. Of course, there's Hank Snow, who got them their first break on the Grand Ole Opry. And there's Farron Young. Farron Young was so fond of the boys, and the boys were fond of him, so much so that Tom Lagarde named his first son Farron, after the great Farron Young, the singing sheriff. And there's Marty Robbins. The Lagarde twins were keen on getting Marty over to Australia as he was one of the top, not only country singers, but singers of all time over there. They're showing him how to get his inoculations. Of course, Bill Anderson, the great songwriter, wrote so many hits for Hank Lachlan, for Connie Smith, so many. And I'm sure he was pitching songs to the Lagards as they were speaking to him. Of course, Leroy Van Dyke didn't button his jacket properly, and the Lagards are straightening him out on how a haberdasher or a clothier should make him look. Of course, he 
had so many great hits, including the auctioneer that is still being played today, and the guards were very, very impressed with him. There's Grant Turner, the great, great announcer for the Grand Ole Opry, saying hello to the Lagarde twins. George Hamilton IV, who had so many hits after meeting the Lagards, of course, George Hamilton IV became the ambassador for country music worldwide. Sonny James, the great, great singer, guitar player, is having fun with the, the Lagarde twins. There's Roy Clark, a great, great instrumentalist singer, plays banjo, fiddle, guitar. I'm sure the Lagards would have loved to have had Roy Clark play on some of their sessions. Carl and Pearl Butler, what a handsome couple. Look how they're dressed. Those kinds of clothes the Lagarde twins still wear today handsomely. I wish you could see them, and I certainly hope you will. And there they are with Alonzo and Oscar. There's four great comedians there as Ted and Tom Lagarde introduce comedy into portions of their show that breaks up the show and is just a great, great thing to have as part of their show, and I'm sure they learned a lot from the great Lonzo and Oscar. Minnie Pearl with, there's the Jordanaires, the Jordanaires sang on no less than three songs that the Lagarde twins recorded, helping their records reach the top of the charts in Australia that may not have been able to have been done without the great Jordanaires. And I'm sure the Jordanaires remember them from the great records that they made with them. What a great, great singing group. There, of course, is Ted and Tom Lagarde saying hello to Hank Snow, who was instrumental on getting them their first appearance on the Grand Ole Opry country music show out of Nashville, Tennessee, shaking hands with Hank Lachlan, who was the first person to record the Nashville sound with Chet Atkins on Send Me the Pillow That You Dream on, 1961. Of course, Bill Anderson, receiving yet another award for some of the great songs that he'd written. He's probably receiving the award for Once a Day, Every Day, All Day Long, as sung by Connie Smith. He's written so many great songs. There's a Ryman Auditorium. They're standing out front with Ralph Emery, the great radio and television announcer, and his lovely and talented wife at the time, Miss Skeeter Davis. And, of course, Ralph Emery was so impressed with their talent, he had them on their 5.30 Ralph Emery show in the morning. They got so many cards and letters that Ralph Emery had to have them back for two more appearances, which they did. Of course, the great icon of country music and Sun Records, Mr. Johnny Cash, saying hello to Ted and Tom Lagarde, I'm sure there's a mutual admiration society right there between the Lagarde twins and the great Johnny Cash. And, of course, holding up the big fella, Jimmy Dean. This is Ted and Tom Lagarde, October and November 1963 at the DJ convention. It was the biggest country music event of the year. They're still talking about it today and doing mostly in part by Ted and Tom Lagarde. I'm Boomer Castleman bringing you some of my favorite entertainers not the least of which is Ted and Tom Lagarde, still at it after all these years with a new rejuvenated television show starting in Australia in October this year, Country Style. It will be on for six months in Australia, and I certainly hope the rest of the world is privy to these shows, as I've seen some of them, and they're second to none. Ted and Tom, the Lagarde twins. I want to tell you about their book, the Lagarde Twins, Showbiz Hustlers. Let me take you back to the beginning. These twin boys walked 15 miles across the bushlands of Australia to a tent with a dirt floor and folding chairs. As the projector started up, the movie appeared in black and white on the screen. And there, for the first time, they saw Hopalong Cassidy. They ran almost all the way home and told their mom we're going to become cowboy singers. Let me read the introduction to Showbiz Hustlers. Being raised in the bushlands of Australia in the 1930s and 40s was a rough and hard life. We didn't think about it back then because that's how life was. You have to live the hard life to understand it. But we also made a picture in our minds of the kind of life we wanted to lead, and it became a beacon that has guided us on our long journey in show business. We hope and pray that our book falls into the hands of our fellow strugglers and dreamers to give them unfailing encouragement to pursue their hopes and dreams. Above all else, we want to give God all the praise and glory for our long lives and for His mercy and grace in dealing with us throughout the years. So grab the reins and ride over one million miles with us from the bushlands of Australia across seven continents 
through 23 countries and 45 of the 50 states in America. Let's ride. Ted and Tom Lagarde. They appeared in Vegas, movies and TV shows. And for you Trekkies out there, get this. This book is packed with pictures and stories and is a must read. We'll put a link below the video so you can get your copy of The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers. The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers makes a great gift. This book is about twin brothers from Australia who had a dream and it came true. This is Gary Beatty and as Ted and Tom Lagarde would say, G'day mate! <laughs>